Hello, and welcome to my podcast. Do me a favor, subscribe to the John Com Report wherever you get your podcast. You can find us on YouTube. If you're watching us there, hit that like button, hit the subscribe button. You can find us as part of Empire Media, AMP, IRE. Always much appreciated. As you can see, I'm joined here by the Washington Post, Nikki Javalich. We're going to talk about the Commanders' 23 to 10 win over the Houston Texans. But first, a reminder: Bram Weinstein, the voice of the Commanders, and I will do our live stream YouTube show at 7:30 p.m. Tuesday night. Another non therapy Tuesday, but we still have things to talk about. So tune in, right, Nikki? It's a cherry Tuesdays anymore. There you go. I don't don't know what to do. <laughs> Victory Tuesdays. Um, anyway, let's start here. And Nikki, this is five out of six. Mm-hmm. What are you taking away from that? We're gonna get to the Taylor Heineke quarterback stuff and all that, but what do you what's your immediate takeaway? I think Taylor Heineke is gonna start more games. <laughs> um yeah, no, I, he's completely rejuvenated the team. Um, you know, I think the defense has made progress continually throughout the season, but um, they've played their best ball when Heineke is leading the offense. And same for special teams, I feel like. Uh, you know, Tressway has been working on a what I think should be a Pro Bowl career. I don't vote. Um, but what I think should be a Pro Bowl um, season. So, and, and I think the rest of the special teams has played quite well. So, for the first time in a long time, they're finally playing the complimentary football all three phases really playing all right now and joey sly as well he's been very consistent during this stretch and this is the first time that they've been over 500 at this point in the season in four years the other day on my prediction podcast i said it wrong i said first time it's i meant to say first time over 500 this late in the year well i did but because they were one and oh as people remind that's probably why you didn't jinx them then well there you go but it's but they're they're this way because it's it's complimentary football during the stretch five out of six plus seven in turnover ratio. They've cut back on the penalties and they're getting some production out of that offense. The defense is playing lights out. Right. Let's start with the defense because it's two guys in particular who are doing yeah. not yeah. just well, but really well. I want to get to right. the young guys too, but the old guys, the old guys in the middle, That's Deron right. Payne yeah. and John Allen. I mean, it's it's remarkable what we're seeing from I shouldn't say it's remarkable because they're very good, but right. we're seeing some high level play from them. Oh, extremely. I mean, they are a force to be reckoned with inside. And, you know, I, I think on a number of defensive lines, it's either a mix of DN and tackle or a pair of DNs that are really the biggest threats, especially in uh, with the pass rush. But it's these two are doing, you know, a lot of the work and they're opening up opportunities for other players too. like, you know, Montez Sweat is working on what could be a career year in terms of sacks. He's already got, I think, seven already this season or six already this season. Um, so he could top his career numbers, but the way they're playing up front with stunts and uh, the communication, I, it's just, they're creating, can I say the H-E double hockey stick? Yeah, of course. I, they're creating hell for offenses. So it, it's it's fun to watch. It's a big damn improvement over last oh, year. Did How's you just that? say a four little word? <laughs> I, I, think, I think it goes back to, you know, one thing they've talked a lot about, and we talked to Rivera about this. I don't know if it was Friday or the last couple of weeks because you lose track of with yeah. everything going on here about their playing in unison. And yep. it's been a theme lately. And he'll he'll bring up really good examples of them on certain stunts. And and John Allen brought it up today mm-hmm. post game about some plays that they make that it's not a coordinated stunt, but it's one right. that develops because one player might see the other guy looping outside or going outside. So the other guy ducks inside that yeah. unison. We did not see that last year. I think some of that, maybe Jeff Scanina has done a good job yeah. with the troop, and they're also producing on their own, but I think he's done a good job as D-line coach. Yeah, no, absolutely. It was Montez, Montez Sweat's first stack of this game. They did a stun. I think it was a tackle and Montez on that side. Montez kind of looped around um, and, and got him. So, yeah, you see, there's at least one every game, I feel like, where it, you can really just see you know, the effect of it has. And then Jonathan, Jonathan Allen just a force up, Ryan. His first sack, he literally pushed back the guard at least six yards. Um, and he's had a number of those with his signature hump move. So, um, yeah, they're, they're really working well together. And, and not just the line, as you said, I, the, the pass rush and the coverage always go hand in hand. And you look at the way the line is playing, but also the way they're, they're secondary is they've rearranged that group to give the young guys more time in the field. And I think it's really remarkable that Benjamin St. Juice and Derek Forrest played sparingly last year, have earned their way into the starting lineup this year. Well, and I'm glad you brought them up. Thank you. You're welcome. But, but part of the re- thing with them and talking to them after the game too, I think it's the learning curve that takes process. It's just because right. a guy's out there does not mean they're a finished product. There's right. a lot of learning to be had. So like Derek Forrest, for example, said was I was talking to him after the game and he's talking about how just 
the little things he's learned that have made him better. Just it could be situational. It could be by being able to read and know what's coming based on alignment. Right. And he's gotten better with that. And he's a he's a massive hustler. That's yeah. why he keeps getting those plays. But it's also his growth just in terms of what he knows. And it allows him to play with more confidence and faster. And then with St. Juice, is kind of the same way. Right. And he even brought up the, the play where Forrest gets the pick. It starts with St. Juice knowing what he has against Brandon Cooks, knowing the situation and saying, okay, it's, it's a, I think it was a second or third and long, yep. and then eliminating a route. As soon as he sees him come off the line, he eliminated the quick game, so he knows he's going to do. He's going right. to try and run the fade. So he gets back there and gets in good position, tips it, here comes force. But it's that kind of learning curve right. that takes place that they have really done yep. well with. That, that learning is what's different this year. Um, and with with – key players too like you know i mean this is no disrespect to carson once but you see a lot of the same plays would be made over and over heineke comes in he's not perfect he's got his physical limitations um but you can see him learning from mistakes he's not throwing the deep shots when they're not there he's throwing it away or he's taking the knee like last game so you're seeing that you're seeing jamin davis learn from his mistakes you're seeing the young guys in the secondary secondary learn from those mistakes. I mean, Benjamin St. Juice brought it up tonight, how he's, um, you know, getting those PI calls. And he's like, if I just ease up a little bit on kind of the hand fighting, um, they see this, they learn, they don't have the same mistakes week in and week out. It's why there's a growth process that takes place, which I know yeah. with here, another slow start was not a good thing, right. but there has been growth. And that right. makes, now I will say with Taylor, he got away with one a little yes, bit, he did. Yes, he but did. then smarter the ball, only right. four picks and it starts. I'll get to him in one more minute, but like with the defense too, stopping the run against that against Damian Pierce was yes. impressive. That guy yes. was ten carries, eight yards. That was by far his worst game of the year, and right. he was a force coming in. But that's all they had. Right. And and you're right, the coverage worked very well. Kendall Fuller got the pick, um, but that defense, it, it's more like you said, it's more than just the two guys. Right. Yeah. No, everybody's making plays, and they're playing together, like you said. Um, you know, I think. Poor Houston, I feel like they're kind of dealing with a lot of what Washington did, you know, like maybe two years ago or when they were had their really bad struggles. Um, when you only have one real playmaker on offense, it's easy, not easy, but easier to shut that one person down. Um, kind of like when Washington had only primarily Taylor. Now they got a, a lot of really good playmakers. And I thought it was really interesting when Taylor Heineke was like, it's it's fun to be a quarterback in Washington. People want to be a quarterback in Washington because look at the play marriage. Look the way the offensive line is playing, the run game. I don't think anybody's really said that about the quarterback position in Washington in a really long time. Well, I'll give you the – the what I really liked is a touchdown to Curtis Samuel. Mm -hmm. And I thought one of the things that was a key in this game was going to be try and get their eyes. They were very aggressive defense, mm -hmm. get them going a lot of different ways. And I felt like early on a lot of the motion was about that, using the entire field. On the Curtis Samuel play with that little jet sweep coming around, yep. you see he's running the jet sweep. The defensive end comes up field, and Samuel's already by him. And the end is like this, waiting for Heineke right. to even react. He doesn't have the ball. He's by him. The two inside linebackers go with Antonio Gibson on the play. Yep. Samuel's over here. He's got numbers. He's got space. It's a really good play. Yep. So they have that ability to create more than they have They have year. to respect multiple playmakers. Um, and that's the beauty of the type of guys they have, but also the number of guys they have. The versatility on both ends, offense and defense, um, ha has given opponents fits lately. Um, and you can see their value, especially in how they continually rearrange the secondary using different looks. You can see it on offense with how they're using Antonio Gibson and Curtis Samuel on both the run and pass games interchangeably. Um, so it's, And this is stuff that Ron Vera has preached for years. I think now we're starting to finally see the results of this team, and hopefully it lasts. So we're not back in the same position, but, you know, he preached growth and development. He preached position flex, and now you're starting to really see it. I think the other guy with that is Bobby McCain. Yes. Been, oh, this absolutely. has been several games he's been playing in the slot, but he does it very well. Right. And for a small guy, I mean, he's not a big guy. He's probably – right. He's not much taller than me. Right. Now, I know, like, I've got this Superman look I on know, him. You know what I mean? know. But, I'm surprised. But well, thank yeah. you very much. You know, but, no, he's like, but he plays tough up there. Yes. And for a smaller guy, and he's quick to the hole. I mean, just his versatility is among them. We just haven't mm -hmm. talked about him, but his versatility has helped, too. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, he's he's a big reason that Derek Force is getting more time on the field because he can easily move down into the slot. He's played corner before. He obviously knows safety. 
but they can move all those guys around. Kendall's played in the slot. He can play outside. I mean, Benjamin St. Juice can play most anywhere. Um, and, and Cam Curl is, he can, he's your do it all defensive guy. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's huge. It just allows you to do more things and do it well. Okay. Let's get to Heineke. So, yes. I mean, everybody's waited long enough, I know, so, but with, I mean, first of all, any surprise that they're going to no, score one? No. They had to stick with him. There's no choice. I'm really surprised is that they dragged it out this long to actually announce it. I mean, um, no. I mean, I think after the Philly game, it was pretty clear. My only reservation in going harder with it this game is, you know, what if they did implode, which is something this team is capable of doing. Um, but they they played as they played consistently, which I thought was. That was a that was a really strong performance, and yeah, we can say it was just the Texans or one eight one, but for them to come out of the Philly game and still play as well as they did, I I thought that that said a lot for the team. And the, the team has obviously responds to him, and this yeah. is a this might be, and I was just thinking about this too. Like, I was wondering, like, we didn't see the same thing with the team last year, right. but we weren't in the locker room. Right. How much does right. being in the locker room help see what he? What, how they gravitate toward him or what he means. Right. Yeah. No, I mean, you can definitely see it. The way these guys, they, they play always to the very end, even in close games, um, even in losses, like, and there's only been one with him this season, but they always play to the very end. Um, they rally behind him. They root for him. Um, he's a guy that's, he's kind of like that popular kid in high school who gets along with everybody, you know, and offense, defense, special teams, everybody loves him. And it's just, it's not really anything he's outwardly doing. It's just the nature of who he is. He's just natural around these guys. I think Alex Smith was a lot of the same way, though he was more conservative publicly, just in who he was out front. But um, I, I think these guys just, they respect who he is and they respect his story and the way he came up. And I'll say too, like, it doesn't mean they dislike Carson Wentz. Mm -hmm. Carson Wentz is, is he's just, but he's a different personality. Yes. He's a type A guy. He's not warm and cuddly, but he is yes. in there too. Yes. But, but Taylor lives in that locker room. And that's what yes. I'm saying. Like we get a chance to see, like he's had his locker all the time. Right. And when you see him talking about this, the Jordans that he's buying and all that, yes. that it's like, there's a little lean in his eye yes. where it's like, this is a fun thing for him. And then of course, we're sitting there talking to the other day. He's wearing this flannel coat that it's like he wore it Friday. He wore it on the He's team. been wearing it he for four days. Right. Who are in the team playing yes. Saturday? He wore it to the game today. Yeah. But like that to me is like his persona. Yeah. No, he can he's an experienced player who's who's traveled a lot in the league, so he can get along well with veterans. He has tendencies of a young player. Let's buy a lot of shoes at Jordan. <laughs> Um, but he also knows that all of this could end in a second because it did for him once already. Um, so he's, he's relishing the time, but also putting in the work knowing, you know, every game is going to be really hard no matter who you're playing. Have, have you seen changes in his game? I mean, is it that obvious to you? To me, it is it, just the way he's, you know, he, he's not forcing everything. He's not always going for that home run play. Um, I, I mean, I, there have been clear instances, obviously, those two plays in Philadelphia. Um, there was another one today where he just threw it away, didn't try to force it down there. Um, and I, I think those are significant changes. I, I would imagine that's very hard to do as a quarterback when you played one way, you know, a, a long time. And he has managed to do it, and there's still mistakes. It's not perfect. Um, but he's managed to tame it a bit so he keeps his, you know, his style of play, his personality out there. The reason that guys love playing with him but also being a little bit smarter about it. Um, I, just, I, I am also just so impressed by the way he mentally or, or, you know, just his demeanor out there. Like he never, it never seems to be too big for him. It, the pressure doesn't seem to ever be too great for him. Um, he's just always kind of the same guy, no matter the outside noise. And I think that's just, that's huge as a quarterback. And it's funny because he also, I think knowing this offense very well, like he mm -hmm. has, makes a big difference. And okay. it's one of the reasons why when they put him in there with Ron said it could help them is his knowledge. Yeah. And you see it even today on that 17, there's a 17 yard pass to Terry on the side yeah. where he's about to get hit, but the ball's out because he hits the plant step and the ball's coming out because he knows where to go. He knows all yeah. that. And he's throwing on time and in rhythm. And you see that a lot with him. And so okay. I think that's another big thing for him. But again, I just always go back to how guys respond right. to him. And I know like, Trust me, like players, they know, they see yeah. the flaws. They, everybody sees them. But sometimes, as John Allen said, 
you can't really explain it. Right. You know? Yeah. I mean, he also said that, you know, as Coach Saban told him at Alabama that it's really the team that decides the starting quarterback based on how they play with him. Um, and look at how they played with Heineke. There's no denying that much. Um, and have the tables been turned and they played really well with Carson Wentz. I'm sure they would have rallied behind him, but not it's just a different different personalities. Um, but certainly they they would have responded the same and yeah. You know the the same circumstances would unfold, but um, yeah, they're they're on a hot streak with Heineke. So last thing, then, where do you think this team goes now? I mean, they are playing again. They're playing. They found a formula. Where do you think this goes from here? I mean, I, I think they have a good shot at the playoffs. How deep they go, if they make it, we'll see. But I, I think they're really showing their potential. Of course, in the off season, they're going to be left with that same major question. And that, of course, is about the quarterback. Heineke is still he's playing well. There are always going to be those limitations, and they may always be limitations that are too much for Ron Rivera and his staff. So then what? Um, but I, I think with Heineke, they're really able to develop the rest of the team. Um, that defense is is lights out, and we'll see what they ultimately decide with Deron Payne, who's coming up. But um, they got a young core there in the secondary. They got some really young playmakers, good playmakers on offense. So they're developing into a respectable team, no doubt. Right. And I think the one thing Taylor does, first of all, he's a free, he is a free agent. Correct. They but, already signed that guy. Right. But and he's not going to break the bank to resign. No. But I think what he does is he gives you the ability to say, okay, if you can't find, you don't have to go out and force a trade. Right. You've got a guy that you can do that. And maybe some people are saying, well, we said this last year. Well, they weren't at that point right. last year. And right. maybe they're at it this year where they it's almost like he's their version of Ryan Fitzpatrick. But but he gives you that ability to to buy some time if you want. And and I feel like the second most important player on the field behind the starting quarterback is the backup quarterback. Hmm. And yes. they have they clearly have that guy. You know, he right. can step in and win games. That's ultimately what you want. And he's like the ultimate team guy. Everybody loves him. There's literally what more could you want from a backup quarterback if you don't deem him to be a long term starter, right. that is. Um, so, yeah, I, I think that should be one of their first moves if not get it done before the, se the season ends. Absolutely. So, all right, Nikki, that's it from Houston. Tell people where they can find you. On Twitter. Besides right here. Yeah, on Twitter, so long as Twitter stays alive. Um, my handle is Nikki Jabala, N I C K I J H A B V A L A, or at WashingtonPost.com. There you go. Thanks a lot for joining me. Thank you for tuning in. Remember, Tuesday night, 7.30 Eastern time with the voice of the commanders, Brian Weinstein and I. We'll answer your questions. And if you still have some rants after five out of six, let us know and we'll talk about it. And there you go. Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll talk to you next time.